Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. Today I want to talk about what is the difference between a good software engineer versus a great software engineer. I remember when I first picked up computer science. I was like, okay, this is really fun. And I assume like this is the type of work I will be doing in the future. For example, during a class, we assign a class project. We have to work on our own trying to figure out how to implement a function. When the description and the project requirement is very clear defined and we weren't allowed to work with other students and this created a very isolated experience so when i first got my internship i was like oh so now i get to work with other people but of course during internship once again your project is way and depending on where you go like for example my internship project was very up in the air like we could have pretty much done anything we didn't have to worry about the tech stack we can pick whatever we want to do and it's pretty much like a learning experience this really made me believe because I'm doing so well in class and this internship seems fun I will be you know a top player when I've joined my first company but unfortunately that wasn't the case this is pretty much very different from what I expected the technology was already in place so I had to ramp up on these tech stacks I don't get a lot of say because I wasn't there when the project was first formed and I'm not senior enough to make these decisions anyways so my job was to implement new features or improved styling or something like, you know, simpler as a ramp up task. And at the time, like I didn't know any patterns or syntax. So I was writing my code pretty messy, like lack of days ago, you can say like, cause at a class, like no one really cared that much about your styling. Like you can have random comments or like, you know, variable names that doesn't really represent anything, but those are bad habits that I carried over from school and there's something that i had to fix when i first started my job it was also at that moment i realized wow there's actually such a huge gap between even knowing coding to what software engineering is all about because now i'm working all on my own there's no teaching assistants no professor whose responsibility is there to guide you to want you to succeed Whereas now people are out busy with their own task, like they're happy to help you, they're happy to provide resources, but they're not as available as the teaching assistants or the professor. So now it becomes a very tricky situation, it's like I'm trying to ramp up all these newer technologies, trying to figure out a lot of these things. And that's when I first realized, okay, knowing coding is different from knowing how to use it. And I think it was that moment when I was enabling myself to become a good software engineer is the ability to be able to learn. So I think one of the first steps that many of us need to know is that there are so many things that we are not familiar with. It's kind of like the more you know something, the more you realize that you don't know. It was kind of like me, like I keep picking up new features. The moment I start coding, I realized I had to touch this other file and then I had to touch this other stack and I had to reach out to another team. They just keep coming and it was overwhelming. Like, it's, it's very, very interesting because when I look back, like, I can't really tell you when was the pivot, when I flipped the switch and be like, wow, now everything I know a lot better. I think it's definitely like compound interest. Like, the more you put in, the quicker you realize you are able to absorb these informations. So I would say now that I have the fundamental, like, I am a software engineer now. Now I'm actually qualified to do software engineering work. I can write files without any syntax issues, with the good format, good structures. I follow the team's styling rubrics, like I try to review other people's code, like I'm becoming more efficient. I'm slowly heading towards that good software engineer for at least my level. But there's still a huge gap between me and my tech lead, for example. Like there are senior staff software engineers, like they know so much. And for me, it feels like, huh, how do I ever become that good? For example, I remember having a conversation with a manager on this similar issue and they said, you have to be aware. They probably built something like this more than a thousand times, like over and over. But at the end of the day, like these type of pattern remain the same. Like a lot of times, especially if you in one of these stacks, like full stack or something like a lot of these design pattern, I hold very consistently between these different projects, different teams especially across these like bigger tech companies. So like a lot of times, like these are the foundations. Like if you start out very good, then you will 
then you can keep maintaining these good patterns and become even more knowledgeable. This is when I realized, wow, there's actually way more critical thinking and embracing ambiguity in this field than many might expect. For example, a lot of times I had to make this decision like, oh, which option should I do? Should I go with approach A or approach B? Like approach A will be faster. We can get it down a lot quicker, but approach B will scale a lot better than option A. Option A might be hard coded, but option B can scale if we add a new feature down the line. All the back ends already in place. Like we can simply add a new field, for example. So like a lot of these decision makings, like we have to debate, like sure, like B sounds like a better approach, but what if we're not scaling? What if we just want to get it as quick to the market as possible just to test something? Like, you know, there's all these trade-offs, decision makings that you have to do where I really never thought about it in school. And on top of this, you also have to think about readability, sustainability. And a lot of these are something that many software engineers still oversee. For example, like, hey, I'm just going to write this as long as the code review passed, like people approve it, I'm just going to submit it. But what about like, if you're no longer on the team, will new member who pick this up be able to understand what you did? Are you documenting your diffs? Like, are you commenting it? Are you writing design docs to help people who might pick this up in the future? Because many times we might no longer be there, but the software might still be running and the new people who has to touch it will save tremendous amount of time if you document the code a lot better. And I think this is also something that I appreciate a lot that I can also differentiate between some good software engineer versus great ones. It's the ones that really think about how they can leave something better than they started. Like for example, a lot of times when I start a new feature, I look through the existing system. I try to see if there's any room for improvement before I start adding new pieces to it. Because many times you've add new pieces, if the code isn't ready for it, it becomes really messy. So it's better to refactor and make it prepared for the new feature than, okay, let's do all these and then optimize it down the line. So there's always a trade-off. Many times, especially at startups, the philosophy is also very different. It's all about, hey, let's ship as fast as possible, break things first, and then fix it later. But at these bigger tech companies, a lot of times, they're not as willing to take this much risk. They would rather have everything perfect before you submit it. So this is something that I really see. And from my time working at different tech companies, I also realized even as some bigger tech companies, some teams move way more faster, like they're okay with shipping less ideal code and then you know have a month or have a week to bug fix or like improve code down the line. So I, I do see a lot of these trade-offs and it definitely depends on your team. And I would say like there's no one size solution to define what's a great software engineer because many times it's up to the leadership. You can be, con be considered a great software engineer if you just ship a lot of stuff, like have a lot of impacts. Like, oh, who cares about the tech that like the person after me can fix it. I already built all these like, you know, it worked when I built it. I don't really care how clean the code base is, what the tech that is. I got my promotion. I'm out. So. The next person who come in will have to fix it. Sure, like you were the star player, but would you be considered a great software engineer? I don't know. Like, what would the people after you be thinking? Like, sure, this person delivered all these impacts, but now I'm here to fixing all these issues. It's it's kind of interesting. It's like a trade off. So, what do you guys think? Like, would you consider like this is ideal, or you know, this is some part of the process? So, in summary, I would say, software engineering is more than just having the ability to code. And coding itself is also very different. The code style coding is nothing like what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's something that you also have to understand to even become a software engineer. And a lot of times when you're working on new projects, new scopes, like you also have to think about from the user, from the other side's perspective. Like I think that's when you can build the best possible software is when you see it from the customer's perspective not just wait for their feedback, but also like be able to predict some of the stuff that they might be able to say and have a solution for it. So I think these are very useful skills. And over time, you will also be able to understand a lot more about scalability, the type of infrastructures that you should use for different applications and how to scale. So I would say like all these things come with time. So I would say at the end of the day, to become a great software engineer, you have to be open-minded and willing to learn. 
we need to learn from other people who are more senior, who are more experienced, and who's doing something right. Willing to listen to other opinions, listen to other advice, and trying to see many different things from different perspectives. And many times, just spend time reading new books, trying to understand design patterns. I think these are super solid skills that can push you to the next level to become that great software engineer. I'm still working to become a good software engineer. And the learning is crazy, like there's just so much to learn. And it's scary and exciting at the same time. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will talk to you guys next time.